Check, check. Welcome back to another episode of the Talking Points podcast presented by the Smoking Section. Today we have our first, uh, I guess, not rapper. We've had a couple of managers and a couple of behind the scenes folks, but as far as artists go, we haven't had anybody other than rappers. And I'm really excited to kind of branch this out a little bit and have some diversity. Our, our guest today is a singer. He's a really, really talented guy out of LA. I've been following his work for probably almost a, almost a year or so, I'd say. I was introduced to his to his voice and his stylings from from Locksmith actually, who our day one listeners know he was on here not too long ago. If you haven't heard that one, check that episode out too. But this guy, back to our topic, he's a very talented voice out of LA and he's quickly making a name for himself as well as working with a lot of other artists and doing some doing some vocals for them and without uh, risking myself talking into oblivion <laughs> we have Jarrell Perry on today yo how's it going sir yeah thanks for having me i'm doing swell absolutely it's cool, it's cool that you mentioned locksmith you know because i feel like out of out of all the collaborations i've done you know that one always sticks out the many songs that i've done with locksmith you know what i mean because yeah. locksmith's fans like they go so hard you know what i mean like right and some of you know my my closest fans i would say come you know through that avenue of, oh, of really? those locksmith tracks you know so yeah. it's really cool the first song i heard from you or it wasn't your song it was locksmith's song it was broken oh yeah uh the rihanna cover yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And that one, you know, it was crazy because my girl doesn't really like rap. And I showed it to her because I like to torture her. <laughs> the first thing she said when, when Locksmith was rapping was, wow, I could really understand what he said. He was enunciating really yeah, well. Yeah, that's true. And then when it got to your part, she was like, who's Locksmith? Uh, like, it just, it, it, was, it was two really, really like different kind of tones in the song, but they complement each other so well, like your part versus Locksmith's part. And it was just, I mean, I thought it was, actually, to be honest, I had not heard the Rihanna original song first. No, a lot of people hadn't, you know, which is interesting. Yeah. Because, like, I don't really I don't really listen to radio much. Yeah. And so I, I discover most of my music just from whatever is, like, floating out on the internet and stuff. And the, the sites that I check for don't aren't really Rihanna heavy. Right. You know? And so I had heard it for the first time later on. And I was like, wait a second, that beat sounds really familiar. And so I was out here pushing that song like it was its own complete yeah. original thing from start to finish. Like, oh, holy shit! Hold on a second. Yeah. And then yeah. How, how did you feel when you found out it's the the Rihanna? I stay? thought, okay, that song was great. <laughs> stay was a great song, and then like I saw her with Eminem in oh, uh, in Pasadena at the Rose Bowl, and I saw her do it, and it was, I mean, it was incredible. That's dope. Yeah, I mean, that's that again. Like that's why. The stuff that I've done with Locksmith has been so dope because it really kind of bridges the two worlds. And, right. And for me as an artist, you know, I've and as a just as a person growing up, you know, I've always been open to so many things and I never really had just one lane. So me being able to do a track with like such a hardcore like you know locksmith coming from battle rap you know? right, right right and then here i am coming in with these smooth vocals and then it's a pop song you know radio yeah. song and yeah. you know i came from from a world of songwriting for pop artists and r&b artists but also being a fan of underground hip-hop and a fan of you know electronic music that's coming up so that kind of just you know signifies all all of that for me right I mean, the thing with Locksmith is if you if you listen to some of his stuff from two or three years ago, like it sounds so, so different from what it does today. Like you can really tell from his early releases that he was a battle rapper. Yeah. yeah. Like it really showed because he had the illest bars and you can tell that that was the best element of the song and everything else was like dragging its feet. Right. right you know, right. and it's like it's crazy because there aren't really too many MCs who have seen over the years who like really tangibly improve release to release and he's like one of maybe two or three yeah that i've seen who you can really tell like his music changes and it evolves and it gets better yeah i think that's the best that you can ask and hope for of an artist you know that you're a fan of you want to see that growth and uh, right i know you want to see them take risks too you know a lot of people you know 
they want to hear the same song over and over again, you know, from an artist. But I, what I love is to see an artist grow and take a different direction, you know, every every project, you know. Right. Yeah. Um, on that note, so what is like, what is your kind of creative process? What gets you, what gets you inspired? And like, what are you, what are you trying to do like in a song, like in general? Like what, what's your, what's your inspiration and what are your, what's your purpose for it? I mean, with me, I, you know, I think in order to make great music, you really have to have a, a good taste in music too. So when I'm, when I'm looking to, to start a new song or, or get into a new project, I make sure that I have my ears wide open, you know, and listening to everything that I can, and usually stuff that's different from from stuff that I from stuff that I do. And um, I know, like even this summer, I had to remind myself I should probably listen to music with words, you know, because I was yeah. like listening to so much instrumental electronic, yeah, instrumentals, um, people like. Uh, John Hopkins and uh, this guy Thomas Barfoot and he's like really cool and you know that was really what was inspiring me at that point but you know lyrically as a songwriter and uh, as a vocalist you know I'm inspired by everything from Coldplay to to Brandy you know yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know and uh, and so when I go into a song you know I just want to speak from the heart yeah did you mess with Coldplay's newest project I did, I did. You know, I don't know if it was my favorite. Mm-hmm. I think I, I always go back to the first three, you know, like yeah. Parachutes, um, all the way up to X and Y. You know, X and Y was when I was in high school, so it has all this. You know how it the takes you back? sentimental value. Yeah, yeah, and I was a really emo kid, like, when I was a senior <laughs> in high school. I was listening to, like, Coldplay, the Postal Service, yeah. like, especially, like, Orange County is where I grew up. It's very like scene stir community right. <laughs> so that influenced me a little bit but um but yeah when i'm when i'm creating music i just want to make something that i haven't heard before and stuff that's that's not really anticipated you know yeah because that's I, that's the thing that i don't like is when i can anticipate a lyric or anticipate a move right. you know what i mean it's like chess yeah so it's um, a good way to put it so yeah it's a good way to put it so how do you I remember one time reading an interview about Lil Wayne where he, he was saying how he doesn't listen to anybody else's music except his own. Because I don't know if it was true or not, but that's what was that's what Something was printed. Very, like a very Wayne thing. It is, right? He was saying something about how he doesn't listen to anybody else's music except his own because he doesn't want any outside like sound like to to pervade his, his thought process. Right. And, you know, it was I don't know how true it was, but it was interesting. Yeah, I mean, mm. I don't know because it's what is what is your music? What is anything that we do but you know a compilation or a remix of something, something else? else? Yeah, no, exactly. That's a great. That's a great point. It's like, it's like. I mean, my my thought. I've said this on on this so many times. Is like, it's so difficult to come up with an original concept completely from scratch. Like, there's always these internal like whether like subconsciously even like whether you know it or not you're drawing from something or like just feeding off of like something you heard. And it's like I said, it's, it might not even be intentional. Right. It's just how it kind of comes out. Yeah. And I, I mean, I remember I did some open mic thing a long time ago and uh, it, there was a panel of, of esteemed, you know, music industry people. Like there's like Michael Bearden, who's like musical director from you know, Michael Jackson's, you know, yeah. last toilet. This is it. And, and Jody Watley, and you know, one one of the pieces of feedback I got, this was years, years, years ago, was you know, be careful about being derivative, you know, especially being in my lane, being a black male R and B artist, you know, people get so caught up in what that means or what they expect to see from that, you know, and so that's when I really took a focus to listen to things that were different, you know, and right. and to make sure that I was kind of cultivating as as much newness. And originality within me, you know, as possible. And the only way to do that is to just vary your sources, you know. So, so what I, do you I, what do you think the 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 images of of a black R and B singer? Yeah, I mean, I, it depends on who you ask, you know. What do you think? Uh, I think a lot of people. I would say in a, in a mainstream eye, right? They they either think you're you're either like spinning and twirling dancing up here like Chris Brown, you know what I mean? Or you're like 
ripping your shirt off like tgt you know um i feel like those are the stereotypical like, archetypes mm-hmm. um and uh or your you know burning incense and like you know, <laughs> <laughs> the neo soul like dude yeah i mean so you had a complete you're right it, it really varies person to person because the what came to my mind was neo and usher were the two right right that right. came to my mind when you said ripping your shirt off i was like oh that's usher for sure yeah <laughs> you know so but there's so much more to that you know yeah. and that's and that's something that that extends I, we could talk about that for days like how that extends to just a general consciousness in america about right. what what a, any marginalized group is supposed to be it's exactly. like okay we're told like okay this is what a black male is and what looks like and what he walks like and this is why you should feel this way you know right. this is why you should be afraid or this is why it's okay for yeah. a policeman to gun down you know um, what i mean yeah. like anything like that you know and so but that's not me you know we, we should have the right as individuals to determine, you know, and and assert our own identities. You know what I mean? That's that's separate and also connected to our history. You know what I'm saying? Totally. So how does that how does that carry over into into your music? Uh, I mean, when I'm making music, I'm I'm just being myself. You know, and so. And you can, I think you can tell in my lyrics too. Like I, I try not to hit too hard on the head or be too literal with things. Like I, I try to be a little bit metaphorical sometimes. And um, I don't know. It's just, it's literally just who I am. You know, I think being who I am is different. Yeah. No, exactly. I mean, <laughs> you know, so no, I don't, I don't have to is, try. Yeah. I don't have to. I don't have, it's not like a deliberate decision, you know, to uh, let me try to do something that's going to make me look different, you know, like, I kind of already am, like, just from how I grew up. Yeah, because nobody else, I I mean, at the bottom line, no matter how you grew up or what your circumstances were, like, nobody else is you. Yeah, Like, as long as you present yourself as you, like, it's a a unique story, but, like, you mentioned people, like, deliberately trying to do something to, to stand out and as soon as I feel like as soon as people try to do that like intentionally it rubs off and it shows yeah like all all those little nuances whether it's like obvious or not like it shows in in your in your creative like in your art or in your in your music like if you're deliberately trying to do something that's not natural to yourself yeah like subtly you'll you'll sound out of your element yeah you know exactly. and it will it will all the pieces won't fit completely perfectly and it to maybe maybe not obviously but to 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 the astute listeners like it'll come off that way right 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 you know um it has to be a natural progression too you know and yeah. that's that's why that's why i say you know i expect an artist to change it's like my first project you can tell that there's a, a difference you know sonically from my first project which is simple things in 2013 to the white ep you know because i did take a a leap you know right. personally and artistically you know and and you can hear that because it's authentic to who i am and i didn't have to try that out you know and so i feel like sometimes people will think oh it's it's the cool thing now to to be sad you know in your yeah. music you know what i mean but i wrote this shit because i was sad you know right. <laughs> not because right. it's cool to be sad you know or but um or happy or whatever you feel like you know yeah yeah because it's like i mean you mentioned like your music evolving and changing over time and that's what happens to people like exactly. nobody people say oh like i want his old shit back like, mm-hmm. i want him to do his old shit but like like you you change as a person and like even myself like my musical taste from even as as recently as a year or two ago like it's different now and something that i liked then i may i may may not like now and something the opposite is true to something i didn't like then i might like now and like I see the changes, especially, like, from what I used to listen to in high school and early college to now. Like, my my thought process has completely changed, and the way the way that I consume music is so different now. Right. And, uh, like, even if, like, I've been, I've been writing, like, for TSS for, like, four and a half years now, and I look back at some of my older pieces, and the tone and, like, the nuances are so different. Yeah, it's like you almost don't recognize yourself yeah. sometimes. Yeah, and right? it's weird. It's, it's almost, exactly, it's almost like I'm, I'm looking at that stuff from a third-person perspective. Yeah, it's weird. 
right? <laughs> do you get that same kind of thing? If you oh, to the yeah. Older stuff? Yeah. I, I mean, it's it's severe, severe. <laughs> it's a it's a process. It's a grieving process. <laughs> I like, I'm like grieving for the old me because I'm yeah. like, oh, like I'm either like I'm first embarrassed or like. I'm just like, or confused, and then you know, then I could be a little bit nostalgic about it, and then yeah. I'm like, what the fuck was I thinking? Like, I don't know, but um, you, that's just a part of life, and I can only just say thank you, you know, that I've evolved, you know, because right. some people don't yeah, get the chance, or they some don't have the, stagnant. they don't have the freedom, or they they feel they don't have the freedom, and they they just they just haven't evolved, and. Um, you you have to you know i think that's that is an essential part of the human experience you know and and i i don't take it for granted i think i think it is a privilege you know mm-hmm. because a lot of times just life gets on you you know what i mean but um yeah totally and like well i guess this is a little bit of a tangent but uh i like i just just came in my head uh locks locksmith stuff to go back to that a little bit his stuff is really emotional and really really deep Mm -hmm. what was it like for you to to kind of to be a part of something like that where like he was really on some of those songs he was really like looking into like some really dark oh yeah emotions and memories like the line uh in broken where he goes like um putting all my thinking about my mother while I put all her stuff in a box yeah dude you know like things like that I was like holy shit I can't believe he was saying those things yeah it's all and that's the thing about Locke it's always real like every, yeah. every new track that he sends me I'm like damn like just when I thought it couldn't get any realer yeah 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 he hits you with another one and I'm just like <laughs> what like I've yeah I've never I've never uh, you know worked with an artist as honest yeah you know and as open and um you know and sometimes it is dark you know yeah. but um i i can only take that and and use that as fuel you know to to bring out something different you know right. kind of when when i'm working with Locke, it's it's really being able to kind of complete his story yeah. you know with with my perspective you know so there's no way i could i could go the way that locksmith goes you know because that's because you're not locksmith yeah yeah because that's like, yeah real. and that's not where i'm coming from but um but i i can only kind of take that baton from him you know what i'm saying yeah yeah in a relay kind of take that to the finish line and and i think i think that's what's cool about how we work together totally um so what's it like when you when you record a song or like even like you mentioned like listening to some of your older stuff what's it like to listen to yourself it's uh it's different every time it it really is different every time because you know the, there'll be certain certain vocal inflections or certain words that like I didn't notice before yeah. you know and because it's coming from me it's like when you look at a picture of yourself you're kind of scrutinizing a little bit right you know? right right and sometimes you wonder is like am I even looking at the real me right now or yeah. you know Sometimes with the songs, I feel like they, like a song I've written two years ago, but I still perform something like Getaway, for example. It's like that song kind of took its, took a life of its own. And at that point, it almost becomes a separate part of me. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, it's like something that flew away. And now I'm like, I'm kind of looking at it from, from, a, from another view, you know, right, like from right. the ground, you know, which is. It's pretty crazy, you know. But it's not always like that. Like that's a really positive example. There's a lot, yeah. of, there's a lot of songs that I'm like, what was I thinking, you know? Or yeah. Um, but, but I mean, you clearly must have been thinking something. Like, yeah, something yeah. Was... Or you know, I tried it, and I mean, that's that's the most important part is that you have to keep creating. You know, not everything you do is gonna be awesome. Ninety nine percent of it's gonna suck. Mm-hmm. And I had to kind of, <laughs> I kind of had to come to terms with that as a perfectionist, you know. So that, that's have, the only way you get better. Yeah. So do you have people whose whose opinions you trust is to if they say like you know, not feeling this one or this one might not be there or something even the reverse where it's like you might not think it's like that great but like God ah, this is the one. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. I mean it's a little bit different for me now because you know, I do really respect and trust my team. You know, which is my uh-huh. my management and my producer Hassan. You know, I really trust their opinions because we've been doing this together for so long and everything that we've done 
musically has been, you know, as a team. And so if one person's not feeling it, then it's not, then it's not it, you know what yeah. I mean? So a lot of times that like, you do have to put your pride to the side and kind of I can like, imagine. And look at it, you know? I've had huge, you know, arguments over songs before, like earlier uh-huh. and they like <laughs> ready to throw things you know, <laughs> about one, about a bridge. Oh know? my God. Yeah. And it's like, you know, it really wasn't that deep, you know? But, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is though sometimes because it's you're putting this your is heart not out light. There, yeah. yeah, this is like this is something that comes directly from you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then you don't even really know where it comes from. You're trying to figure it out yourself. Uh, yeah. So it, it is a sensitive it, it is a sensitive subject. But I've I've learned to be um, a lot more I don't know easygoing about the process. You know about playing playing my music for other people and kind of you know, taking the opinions as they come and go, you know? Totally. Totally. What is, uh, what was your first, like, aha moment in the industry where, like, you know, like, this can be something that I can, I can be great at? What was your first, like, moment of, of that first, kind? First, uh-huh. aha. I think it had to be back in college. I was performing with a, with a band uh, made up of, just classmates and people from my from my dorm uh-huh. on the floor and uh they have this competition at UCLA kind of like a ba- battle of the bands called Spring Sang and uh I remember you know everybody was there they have it in the tennis center it's like 5000 kids sold out first week and uh really competitive to get on that stage and we go out there and I'm looking looking out at the crowd and like hearing you know after we finish this song which is probably one of those songs that i'm gonna that i do look back and say what was that <laughs> this <laughs> okay. was not this was not dope yeah but at, in the moment it was just the dopest thing that had ever happened to me and yeah even thinking back now it's like when's the next like when's the last time i performed in front of five thousand to eight thousand screaming people you know what right I mean? and they're just there to support you know um that's that was kind of a aha moment for me like i think i love this yeah you know? and i'm gonna i can get used to this thing. yeah yeah <laughs> i can get used to this and also because it was a song that i wrote you know it's not like we were doing a cover out there right. it was a song that we wrote and recorded ourselves and that's really important to me to write yeah. my own music it wouldn't be the same if it was somebody else's song and so to see that go from me and my dorm you know recording on a radio shack mic to <laughs> performing in front of five thousand kids i was like this is really possible yeah. you know and i did it on my own you know so so yeah that was, that was probably the first the first big moment for me when when i decided i wanted to do this for for myself right yeah what was your what was your college experience like college was dope I, I, college was was everything for me because um i grew up in a pretty like sheltered kind of environment and even even as a kid I was the only child and I was used to being on my own and I always had this urge to get out and like and be independent I remember being like seven eight years old in the mall and I would like break away from my parents (laughs) and like walk all in front of them yeah yeah, yeah. I was on like I I was there on my own like on my own business you know like I'm here on my own business and moving out of the house and coming to LA you know, that was the first time I actually got to be on my own business. Right. You know? And uh, at UCLA, there's so many different things you can get into, you know, and that's where I really found a home for me, you know, musically. And, like, I used to produce concerts with, with the student government out there. And and all of my friends, you know, we all just kind of bonded over the over just music that we liked. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and I, that's something that I didn't really find too much of when I was, you know, at home growing up. So, yeah, college was really, really cool for me. And I was always really into into studying, you know what I mean? Like, it was it was just something that I was good at. Like, I, if you give me a goal, you know, like, yeah. I need to get an A grade, like, I can do that. You what know? was your so major? I majored in uh, political science. Nice. And then I doubled in communications. Okay. So you're going to be a lawyer? I I thought for maybe like, <laughs> maybe like five minutes. Yeah, I I have a lot of friends that are lawyers now actually. Oh really? But um, 
but yeah, it was cool. Like, it, it, it was a challenge and it was it was a lot of critical thinking and a, and a lot of writing and I don't know, it, 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 was, cool, it was cool for me. Yeah, because uh, when I started school, I was going to be a structural engineer. I was going to make bridges oh, wow. and buildings and stuff and then... Big money. Right? I mean... <laughs> And uh, there was one class I remember. Basically, the long story short, it was like the longer that I was doing it, the less I wanted to do it after I graduated. Right. And I remember the you know, really in particular, there was one class where it was like a a dynamic physics class where we were learning about like objects moving and calculating shit behind it. And there was it was a three three part course where the first third was studying translation just object moving from point A to point B. The second part was something staying stationary but spinning. Mm-hmm. And the third part was combining the two. So moving and spinning at the same time. And I got the first two down and when I had to combine them it completely exploded my head. And I couldn't get it and I failed that class and that was the last engineering class that I took. Wow. And I was like, "Yep, this is not for me." It's time to make a switch. That's crazy. Rock bottom. So where did you switch over to? I switched to, it was under the econ umbrella. It was a little bit more than just econ. Okay. It was called management science. Okay. Still money. Still, I mean, that was more what you make of it. <laughs> it's more, it's not like, oh, you fall into a six-figure salary. You got to you gotta earn your stripes. But, I mean, there's always a job out there for you. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's really flexible. Yeah, but those degree. still seem like very specific kind of, fields that you could go into you know what I mean I think I was kind of screwing myself a little bit because I like I said I was into everything you yeah know? and I and I just wanted to know everything so of course I picked the broadest major there was which right is communications right which what does that even mean it's it's a mix of sociology and psychology yeah and, and a little bit of uh, political science you know there's a, a little bit of everything um it was it was cool though it was cool. Yeah, we had a... So UCSD is split into six colleges, and, like, each college has their own, like, general ed requirements. Yeah. And the one that I was in, we had a two-year sequence in um, basically anthropology and, like, history. Right. And we pretty much study from the dawn of man, basically, in the first quarter to the last quarter coming up to to now and it was like a complete breakdown of like man throughout the years and it was really cool like I would never have pegged myself to like a class like that but it was just really cool because at the beginning it was pretty rigid and like what you had to learn but then by the last three or four classes uh you basically had a paper that you had to write on anything you wanted to as long as it happened within the time frame that the class was taught so I like I was really curious about like Indian history because I'm from India and I had never really had. There's not really much India courses in high school or college. Or there's yeah. never really an emphasis even in world history and stuff. It's like a yeah, they give you a paragraph. Yeah, a paragraph or two, yeah. and that's it. And so I was really curious to learn about like India throughout history. And it's like I wrote about India in every time period that I had, and I learned just on my own doing research and just learning so much about my culture and about where I'm from. Like it was one of the coolest things I've ever done. Yeah, yeah. And I never would have thought that because usually, like, I mean, history was a class I mean, I was cool at. I got I got good grades, but it was never something that I was like, oh, my God, I love this. You know, so I'm so interested in this. It was never like that for me. Yeah, yeah. And that's the other thing about college, too. If you really go out to seek, you know, who you are and um, you can really get a lot of knowledge of self. You know, that was another, oh, totally. th- that was another thing for me because, you know, I... I Growing up, it was I grew up in a predominantly white neighborhood. You know, mm-hmm. like where I got most of my black culture was in the church. You know, and also that's where I I found my voice. You know, as a singer. You know, but coming coming to UCLA and just, and kind of finding my community there as well, and and uh, and doing some like peer counseling and and, and a lot of cool things with uh, with just the movement itself. Um, was really it was so necessary <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah it was like it was so necessary for me but you had to really seek that stuff out yeah in college it's really how much or how little you want from it like it really is up to you there's pretty much everything out there and if you want it you got to go out and find it and make it your own 
Or the flip side is you don't want it and you can just literally do nothing after class. Yeah, you completely silo yourself yeah, off. You yeah. know what I mean? Because I had a couple of roommates who, who were like that. And it was just the most unfortunate thing to be like, like, there's so much you can be doing right now. Yeah. And it's like, I know you. I know you like X, Y, and Z. X, Y, and Z is right out here. Like, yeah. Go out and put yourself out there and do it. Yeah, and you can try whatever you want because it's you can. If you don't like it, you can quit it. You just stop. Yeah, week, it's, a, it's, a, it's a no risk. A you no can't risk. do that once you're grown. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, if you get a job, you have to stick with it. You know, for a little bit. You know. Yeah, exactly. I mean? Or you know, you're not getting a paycheck at least at school. You know. Yeah. You you have that freedom. You have so many excuses. You know, as a student, you I know, know right? we just be like, I'm a student. You know, someone yeah, looking as, as a four year you know, paid I'm vacation. To out. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Four year paid vacation on your parents' bill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. I mean, I had such a good time in college. Like college, especially like the last my last year. I like I had just switched my major, and I was struggling to finish all my new classes in time because I. I really, it got to the point where I was like, I should finish my classes and get the fuck up out of here and do do the next thing. And I was taking like 24 units a quarter for the last three quarters of school. And it was like, it was six classes. And it was, it was crazy because I had all those and then I had an internship also. Yeah. And it was the most structured I had ever been at that point. And for college, like nothing is structured. Right. Like I had, I had a roommate who pretty much would have a couple he was he was he was political science also and he was but he was like only political science he was pretty much done by the time he got around to his senior year and he was just taking a class or two here and there and just chilling, chilling. And he was doing the frat thing and he, I mean it was cool for him and then there there were so many times I remember where I'd wake up at like seven in the morning and he'd be just like getting over his his tipsiness from the last night totally. and just crawling into yeah. bed and it happened so many times I mean without her one time I was getting ready to go to class, and he's like, bro, come here real quick. And he, like, pulls me over, and he's, like, obviously drunk. He's like, all right, I can't let you go until you have a shot with me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's, like, 7 in the morning, and I was like, You did. Right. You took it, right? Of course. Yeah, you had of to. Of course. He's the, he's the kind of person who you really just can't say no to. Like, yeah. He, he won't let you, let you off the hook until you do what he wants. That's why he's gonna be a great attorney one day. Right, exactly. He's yeah. in law school right now. I mean, so. you kind of you live you live for those moments. Totally, know? and those exactly that's what you walk away with. Yeah, I had a packed schedule too. Like I, remember I had one of those quarters where it was like I was taking like eighteen to twenty units, and then I had this internship at um, Sony. Actually, oh yeah, Sony Music. But well, when it was Sony BMG, yeah, and gotcha. for some reason I had on my resume. That I spoke Spanish because I had done some studying abroad in Mexico, <laughs> and so they put me in the Latin department, oh, which man. was like crazy because, and cool because I got to learn about all these new like learn about well, they were new to me, yeah, Latin artists, yeah, um, like this you know, crazy uh, like ranchero style like oh, really? Mexican country music like los pigadientes, like, oh, you know, what I mean? it was like yeah, yeah, uh, and uh, you know I was doing that and then I was working another job and I pulled so many all nighters, you know. I you know it's crazy I've never pulled an all nighter. Never to this day. You serious? I was Swear. a king of all nighters. I could never do know? it. I needed at least an hour or two of sleep. But I had a lot of I had a lot of problems though because I'm a really heavy sleeper. So once I finally once went you're to out, sleep, you're out. Yeah, I, yeah, I was out. Like one yeah. time I was definitely an hour late to a final. <laughs> No, nah, I never had that. And, uh, there was mid one midterm I went to where I was in it for like 15 minutes. I was like, yo, I literally do not know a fucking thing. Yeah. And I handed the paper in, and I was like, I need to get out of here. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But again, that's so college. There's so many things that are so college. Yeah. It's like if you go into a job today, and you're just like, I can't do it. You know what I mean? You yeah. hand it back to your boss. Like, yeah, what do you think? Like, you you can't just do that, yeah. you know? Exactly. Uh, but yeah, so I, I miss school. Like, I for a while I was thinking about going back and getting an MBA or something. That's like what that. I'm. Th- that's what I'm looking at right and now. Most of my most of my friends did some kind of post grad program. Oh really? So it's kind of cool to like go back and see everybody just with five more degrees than I do. But, you <laughs> know, I'm getting my degree in in life exactly uh, as an artist. You yeah. Know? And, uh, it's a different perspective, you know? Totally. Now, my mom really wants me to go back and get an MBA. Too much. 
So I have my I have a GMAT textbook that's been collecting dust for the better part of a year yeah. right now. Yeah. But uh, uh, the plan is to go back and do it eventually. But I don't know. Right now, I'm just I'm enjoying not being in school. Yeah. You like I I just I hated the school part of college. Yeah. Right. Like. That was school has never really been my thing since. Damn, probably since I was like twelve, thirteen. Like I just never really enjoyed it. As soon as school got a little bit difficult and like a little bit uh, out of my interest zone, I was like, eh. Yeah, it you only know? gets harder. Exactly. It never gets easier. As you get older, you know. Yeah. But uh, yo, I was at I was at UCLA when Jay Z performed there. Oh, I was there too for the Blue Blueprint Blue Three Blue, Tour. Yeah. Yeah, that was the first time I saw Jay Z. That was great. that was the first time I had seen anybody that big. Yeah, at, you know, especially on campus. That was that was pretty nuts. Yeah, no, that was uh, one of my friends from UCLA. He graduated in. You said you're 29. 2009. He graduated in 2011. Yeah, he was a year older than me. Yeah, I think I. Yeah, I remember feeling like extra feeling myself because oh, yeah. I knew the people that were running it. And like, oh, really? Because that's like we used to run concerts together. Like Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, that was dope. Yeah, <laughs> I remember that, that really clearly. Backstage action. Yeah. Oh, you did? Nice. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, yeah, that was like, I had, uh... That was around the time I was like first really getting into into the culture and hip-hop as a whole. Like, it went from more than just listening to music mm-hmm. and like that was right around that turn and I remember like I think that was like the second or third concert I'd ever been to and it was uh, I loved it yeah loved we it. had a lot of hip hop concerts like we had a whole hip hop congress actually oh UCLA. really so like we had everyone from Common to Talib to The Roots oh very cool um, so I, there was definitely a phase when I was just like all I, I would never call myself a hip hop head because that's like a very you know, I I respect that right I respect that title right? right but I was there like wherever the hip hop heads were I was there you know what I mean? yeah yeah that's cool totally that was dope um let's talk about your music yeah uh since we've talked about everything but your music <laughs> uh let's see we have the white EP yeah tell me about that what was uh how did that come about. Yeah, the white EP. Well, it was a, it was really a natural progression off of my first project, which was called Simple Things. And the last couple of songs we did for Simple Things really had this smoother, ambient kind of sound to it. Um, songs like Win and Getaway and you know, First Time, they really had this this vibe to them. And like I said before, like this is when both Hassan and I were really getting into that kind of electronic music and really inspired, you know, by by those kind of airy synths and stuff like that. And I wanted to make a project that was a lot more progressive, you know, but at the same time, it was just what I was going through at the time, you know, the whole time during my first project, I was in a relationship and then broke it off right as we were starting to write simple things so mm-hmm. it just naturally it just worked it just worked it was a lot darker you know? yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and, and and it was cool you know so um and we call it the white ep uh just to symbolize how i was recreating myself with a blank page okay um which has really been my story as an artist all along you know but really with this project i wanted I wanted to really find out, you know, who I was at that time. You know, like I said before, I was making a huge leap, you know, trying a lot of things I hadn't tried before, learning to use my voice in a different way, um, trying out new vocal production techniques, new effects, new lyrical content, new structures on songs. You know, um, not every song has a verse, hook, verse, hook kind of structure, you know, and uh and so that was what was really exciting to me about this project. So I'm excited that it's out. You know, and awesome. people can. So no, no, uh, no uh, connection to the Beatles album. No, no. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I didn't want to be too cliche with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, that's it's not a bunch of Beatles covers on. Yeah, no. <laughs> maybe one day, you know. But yeah, I mean, white could mean so many different things. Right. But for for me, you know, that's what it was. It was the clean it slate. Was a, yeah, it was that. It was that clean slate. You know. And, a lot of times 
that's that's all you want you know totally that is that freedom to recreate yourself sometimes so so that's what i did with this project that's awesome yeah. did, did you feel like it was like a therapeutic release and like yeah it's always a therapeutic it's always therapeutic uh that's the only you know that's a huge reason why i do it yeah you know and it, it just has to come you know straight from me you know so it wasn't the easiest project to make but uh but i can i can definitely tell you you know it was the most honest and 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 most progressive product that that i've that i've put out so far you know so so i'm i am really proud of it awesome um how do you is there a certain level of the disadvantages of not being in a real studio all right (laughs) one day the listeners know they 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 forget they forget yeah. you. I hope so. <laughs> so how do you when you when you're that honest and that vulnerable uh, on a record? Like, is there is there a certain kind of like discussion you got to have with yourself before you're really comfortable putting that stuff out there? Uh, not even not only just like on on a on an mp3 or what have you but like for other people to hear yeah i think it it, happen, <clears throat> it happens with every song you know with with every lyric you know sometimes i have a problem overthinking things you know uh because i do want people to understand in a sense of where i'm coming from you know but a lot of times they might not you know and that's okay you know, yeah I, I like to see my songs as similar to artwork you might see on a wall in a gallery, you know, and for some people it might be a no brainer. Like this is what this was about, you know, but some people need to go to that little plaque next door and, and read the whole story and have that whole history. Some people don't even want to see that. They just want to see it for themselves and say, this is what it means to me. I think all three of those options are fine, you know, Yeah. Uh, as long as people enjoy and appreciate the art for what it is. And so, um, yeah, I do have to have that discussion, you know, all the time and and uh just because you have a great song structure, you know, doesn't necessarily mean it's a great song. You know, you right. also have to have the feeling behind it. You have to have that performance behind it and it has to mean something, at least for me. That's really just a me thing. Yeah. You know, so um so yeah, it, it, it's just a balance that happens every time. Yeah. Is it has it become easier over over the course of your career so far? I don't know. It, uh, writing songs is it's a it's a battle, you know, because you're always it, when you want to push yourself forward, you have to expect there to be some challenges along the way, you know. So you're constantly the con- the conversation is constantly changing, you know, because you're not talking to the same person you were talking to a year ago. You're yeah. talking to this new person with new ideas and new experiences and a whole different perspective. You know, if you really are a human being, you know, in a evo- in evolution, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, I, I don't think, I, I think in some, in some ways it gets easier the more that, the more that you let things go. Yeah. But when you're looking to always best your best right it's a competition yeah it's by by definition right can't be easy right all the time totally that's a great answer um kind of wrapping things up now you you recently put out uh a cover of drake's own it yep so how is i guess first of all i really really enjoyed your your take on it like my my nature is I'm not really a huge Drake fan per se. There's always that certain day when when you're getting into it with your with your <laughs> uh, with your significant other and things are aren't always like the best of days and that's kind of when Drake really resonates with me. But other than that, it's right. like eh. when, you, when you need him the most. Exactly when you need him the most, he's there he for comes you. Comes through exactly. <laughs> but I don't know. There was a there was a really. Like you, your approach to to that song was really different from from the original song, and it was it it uh, conjured up a whole um, 
different set of emotions, especially like in the part where you're singing, I don't want to fuck, I don't want to fuck, I don't want to fuck, I want to make love. Mm-hmm. Like that part, I don't know, it just really like, like everyone is there at some point, you know, where it's like you're going through that, uh, you're in that phase of your life when you're, when you're looking for that emotional connection and you're looking for, for more than just, oh yeah, I'm going to the club tonight and let me see who I can bring back with me, you know? And yeah. It was, it was uh, I don't know, I, I, just, I just felt that, especially that, that, that little stanza there. I really yeah. felt that one. It was a really cool, cool take on it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, you know, and, and of course, all respect and props to Jake, you know, yeah. he has been a big influence. He's always like, there he for has, you. He's always there for you. <laughs> Jake, Jake and those Drake tears. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, and, you know, I think Drake has really opened a lot of doors for people to understand, understand music like that. Yeah, you know what I totally. Mean? Like, he's, like, before him, it wasn't, well, I guess to some degree Kanye. I mean, but Kanye was a little different. It was, like, the yeah. vulnerability. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. not it's not brand new. Nobody's saying, like, yeah. Like but the way he presented it, the way he presented it was really unique. Yeah, the way he introduced it to hip hop, yeah, I think was unique. Totally. And uh, you know, I'm I don't consider myself a hip hop artist, you know, but I take a lot of influences from hip hop. Of course. So, uh, being able to do do my own take on on a song like that was was really cool. I mean, I, we we knew we wanted to do a cover, and like we, Hassan and I were you know fans of Drake, you know, but own it wasn't the first song that came to mind you know that was mm-hmm. some, that was another suggestion you know and the cool thing about that song was there was a lot of room like there's yeah. a lot of room for interpretation you know right. but the lyrics and the meaning still stay stay the same you know so yeah. uh you know i that is encouraging to to know that people feel something totally you know, uh about uh, about the way that we've put it out there right of course yeah um how is your approach to making a cover different from from creating a song from the ground up I, I i have a lot of fun with covers you know because you already have usually you know i'm a fan of the song i'm not gonna do yeah. a cover you know of a song, song you hate, hate right <laughs> yeah yeah uh so yeah i already love the song it's not like yeah. i'm sitting here in front of a blank page and i have to figure out what i like and what i want to write you know so um doing covers are it's cool because you have that and then it's a it's a little bit of a challenge to do it in a way that's not a direct copy you know yeah and in that it, through that process i do find out a little bit more about myself and, yeah. and what my sound is like if there's any place to to let people know what your sound is it's like do a cover you know what i mean yeah. because they already know the song you know they're gonna know if you're just copying, you know, the same yeah, yeah. inflections, the same, you know, there's already so much that is the same. So how do yeah. you make it different? <laughs> do you, yeah. do you listen to, are you familiar with Sid Sriram? A little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has some cool, he had a cover of Blood on the Leaves. And I wasn't really, I mean, I was not a Yeezus fan at all, but Blood on the Leaves was one of my, one of my more favorite songs from there, but it wasn't, still wasn't like, oh my God, I love it. Mm-hmm. You know, but when he, did a cover of it like I lost my mind like it was, <laughs> it was just a whole new take on it and it was like it sounded like a completely different song even though it wasn't you know and I mean I got that same kind of vibe from from your cover of Own It yeah you know and like it's cool it's cool that uh that even though you're not necessarily creating creating it like you're still you still are in a way yeah yeah absolutely you know like and it's a cool, uh, it's a cool spin on it. It's cool, yeah, and uh, I'm just glad that it works. You yeah, know? because when we cover an artist like Drake, or we've done, I've I've done a Michael Jackson Butterflies cover. I've yeah. done Sade. Like these are not, these are not any kind of artists that you can just go ahead and mess with their songs. You know, right, I mean? right. You gotta, like, you gotta come correct. People are gonna come for you if you don't get if it you right. It, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? So, uh, being able to do that, you know, in addition to all of the stuff that I do with my original music, and I think that just adds another dimension, of course. another way to talk to my fans, another way to get new fans. Um, it's really cool, yeah. Yeah, so I'm glad I'm glad people like it. 
totally. Um, I know you got to get going, so uh, we can wrap. We can. This is as good of a point as any. It was a, it was a great time. It was a great time, and I'm glad that you that you were able to come out here. Oh, thanks, man, for having me. This was really cool. I had a good time, so I hope uh, I hope you can come back soon. Yeah, absolutely. So where can the people find you? They can find me uh, anywhere online. JarrellPerry.com. Yeah. How do you spell that? J a r e l l p e r r y. Awesome. That's Twitter, and Facebook, Twitter Instagram, everything. at Jarrell Perry, Instagram at Jarrell Perry, Facebook, Jarrell Perry Music. Perfect. Yeah, that's ev- that's everything. Awesome. I am uh, on Twitter at tss underscore raj. Follow me. Uh, go to iTunes, subscribe, share, rate, review, tell everybody. Um, thank you guys for listening to the Talking Points podcast and we will be back again in a couple of weeks.